So I'm here in DC in front of the Prettyman, Prettyman courtroom uh, where the seditious conspiracy trial is going on for uh, our good friend Stuart Elmer Rhodes. And uh, it's crazy kind of being a Canadian walking down here because I think as a Canadian, we're almost like the tenants above the meth lab looking down going, what the fuck is going on down there? And like, I'm, I literally parked here just to go to the Capital One Arena. And I have a tour of the Senate today in the Capitol. Um, so I just parked fairly close to the hill. And uh, I, I, I literally passed these guys here. And then there's these guys here and, and, and every other exit. Like, so I went inside because I'm like, oh, might as well hear here. I'm, might as well go in. And then I look around and like all these reporters are camped out. And I'm like, it's kind of a little crazy. Because I'm just like, this is just a regular trial. But I mean, like, see, this is conspiracy, I guess, is a really big deal. Because it hasn't been thrown out in the courts for like, I don't know, 100 years, something like that. 150 years, something stupid like that. But anyways, just um, being the nosy little Canadian that I am, I'm just walking about, asking questions and reporters. And then trial lawyer comes out. Like, really nice guy. Uh, and I mean, this is the defense attorney for Elmer... Rhodes, we won't call him Stuart because he doesn't like that. Doesn't like being called uh, El, uh, Elmer. He looks to be called Stuart. Uh, but anyway, so apparently this Elmer Stuart Rhodes is kind of a constitutional scholar and he knows some shit. So like his defense lawyer, nice guy, like really nice guy, crazy good dresser. He's from Texas, so he's wearing these cowboy boots, which is kind of standard for Texas, right? Anyways, I digress. So he starts telling me, he says, like, listen, like, listen to this guy here is like listening to a constitutional scholar. I'm like, I don't know, dude. Jamie Raskin is a constitutional scholar. You know what I mean? Like that guy I would listen to. A guy who looks like Dr. Evil, who's going to like an eye patch. I'm not really listening to that guy, especially if he's the guy who's storming the Capitol. I mean, in The Princess Bride, he's him. Good luck storming the castle. <laughs> like, that's the guy. So... They're saying that this trial now is going to go on for another three weeks. Like the defense has just started this week. I missed Glenn Kirshner by like a half an hour, which I'm pissed about because I could have got up a half an hour earlier or whatever. I probably wouldn't have parked down here because the spot wouldn't have been open or whatever. But like I could have done something. I, I had this like dream of meeting Glenn Kirshner one day and having him on my podcast just so we can talk shop and stuff like that. But I digress again. So anyway, so talking to the reporters, like there are some from CNN, some from other like entities as well. And for the most part, they're giving me a good idea of why shit's going down and why shit's about to go down. So, sorry, that's my green light. Uh, anyways, the whole thing about the dichotomy of this, I gotta run because I'm gonna be missing this light. <laughs> The whole dichotomy of this, the polarization of the both sides, is really just crazy. Like, yesterday I spent the day walking the mall, the Washington Mall. So I went all the way from the Capitol, down past the monument, the Washington Monument, uh, all the way down Lincoln Memorial, went to the Vietnam Wall, went to the MLK uh, Memorial as well. And then I went to the Holocaust Museum. So I really crushed an afternoon of good American history. And along the way, because it was a gorgeous day, much like today, you know, as I'm walking around, I just figure, hey, I might as well throw out the Canadian card, right? Say, hey, listen, ignorant Canadian, if I didn't know what a Republican was and I didn't know what a Democrat was, how would you explain it to me? No right or wrong answer. You know, just trying to understand. No, Canadian's trying to understand. God, it seems like I'm doing a lot of running across these lights. So anyway, so I got some really, really great answers. And I make really great answers. Because they were like, I got a hold of the Republicans. And to be fair, the Republicans seem to be more angry than the Democrats seem to be. Just my opinion. And the Republicans, in my view, we're answering as if they were on trial. You know, like, they're trying to kill our country and that's not American values. And I'm like, okay, 
just throwing this out there, but like at one point slavery was American values. So like, do you think that could be amended? Because you have these things called amendments. If you don't like them, you just change them or you amend them. Because that's what the word means, amendment. And I didn't get that. But like, well, why, this isn't slavery. I'm like missing the point, dude. Like totally missing the point. If something's not working, like I get it, it's not working for you, but like you might not be indicative of the population right now. So, I mean, like that's just an indication. And the Democrats, I mean, I've never seen a bunch of more anxiety, anxiety ridden people because there's an election coming up. Uh, today is Friday, the 4th. Elections vote. coming up on Tuesday, the 8th. I'll be in Philadelphia for that. That'll be a shit show. That should be very interesting. Um, but so the Democrats are like, we're going to lose the House. We're going to lose the Senate. And it's like, it's happened before. You know, and I'm sure it's going to happen again. You weren't planning on staying in power the whole time. You couldn't have been that naive because no administration really does do that. At the midterms, people kind of look around and say, hey, don't like what you've been doing for the last couple of years. We want to switch it up just to keep you honest. And that's generally what they do. So I don't think, well, I'm kind of hoping the Democrats still stay in power, but uh, the reactions to um, them staying in power on this election is quite interesting. Interesting to say the least. Anyways, I'm a block away. Thought I'd share that my little trial experience. Didn't get to meet Glenn Kirshner. Kind of disappointed about that. Glenn, if you're watching, please call me, man. Just call me. Like, take you out for lunch. Talk about some justice, why justice matters, you know, stuff like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. I'd even, I'd even come down to Washington. It's like you live in I think Falls Church and I used to live in Vienna. We're neighbors. Give me a call, give me a call, buddy. Give me a call. Call me. Okay.